Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Christoph and today we're tasting the Doomba clone that I made a few weeks ago. This has been conditioning in the keg for just uh, four weeks, three weeks, something like that, quite shortly. And I'm ready to taste it now. The, um, the recipe was really interesting, so I, I think I got everything in the back of my mind still. Lots of whirlpool hopping. I used East Kent Golding instead of the recommended Perler because I don't have Perler. So let's see if this will be similar to anything I remember. As I said before, I have tried the Doomba from cask in the can and in the bottle, so I should definitely recognize it if this is somehow spot on. Um, the yeast, like last week from Young's, was quite tired because it was um, again from a Y yeast pack that I had quite freshly, but all my Y yeast packs have turned out tired so far, but I can tell you that already that the next beers will be much better because I started doing starters all the time and that helps a lot. So let's see if this, this beer turns clear because it might not have been. Yeah, decent carbonation. It really didn't foam during the bottling, which was a bit strange. The Young's beers, yes, um, not yesterday, last week, they foamed really a lot. Okay, let's have a look. It is quite turbid. It might be yeast in there. It's definitely at least a haze chill. A chill haze, sorry. Um, yeah, it's a bit strange. Wow, yeah, very strong hoppy aroma. That is very similar to what I'm used from uh, to, used to from the cask. The the um, the older ones, the, when you buy cans and bottles, they're never as fresh. They're usually never that aromatic. The color is decent. It, it's a bit muddy now because it's so so uh, cloudy. But uh, yeah, I think the color is, is a good fit. I think I just estimated with a few percent of uh, roast barley, I think. Was it one or two percent? You will know from the recipe video. Yeah, I can definitely smell the East Kent Golding. Not sure about the others, but it is not as sharp as East Kent Golding alone would be. It's a bit more smooth and mellow. So I smell fruits. Uh, pear is very intense. I think that's the East Kent Golding Whirlpool, but then there's also malt. Um, some caramel malt from the from the crystal that I used. Was it the best malt one? I think, yeah. So, um, yeah, decent amount of crystal malt just to boost up the, the maltiness of this ale. Oh yeah, um, fermentation went quite smoothly. I think I'm at around 4.3% ABV from my calculations. So I'm very accurately to, to what I expected. This should be fine. There's an intense bitterness that comes first. And I noticed that in the word after the word will hop. So that is quite aggressive. Um, there's some North Down in there, and I noticed North Down is very aggressive, at least the harvest that I have. There have been breweries with problems with this harvest. So let's let's try to to ignore that for a second. That is definitely not not pleasant. That is a harsh hop bite. Very similar to, to an unsuccessful dry hop when you get some of these uh, polyphenols that the people talk about that, that create a very specific hop bite. There's a smoothness to the malt flavor. There's some sweetness, which gets very quickly overwhelmed by this hop bite. But it's definitely very refreshing. It uh, feels very cool and soothing, even though this comes from a um, 12 degrees fridge that I have downstairs. So this is definitely according to cask ale specs and not, not uh, normal for refrigerator specs. Um, it feels a bit flat now because the hop bite covers everything and that is really not, not that nice. Um, I did have doubts uh, because of the incredible whirlpool hopping. There is someone from the homebrew forum in Germany who uh, is doing the same recipe. So that was basically the reason why I started this this recipe at all. He asked me for advice and I was... Uh, I'm always happy to search these, these old clone recipes that you can find where people just went to the brewery time after time and try to get details out of the head brewer and then edit them up together on the forum. So you know all the details about this beer. It's very, too, very easy to do even mesh temperature and um, fermentation temperature. But uh, yeah, I will compare with his version. I don't know what kind of north down he has and maybe there will be some differences there. And then maybe that's uh, another clue to whether this is a good clone recipe or there's something missing. Okay, again, I want to do a retasting a bit later. So it's been two weeks since the first part of this video you're watching. I have my own um, beer here and it is a bit clearer than before. And I'm just hoping that the polyphenols have reduced a bit. And then I have here 
a beer from homebrewer Steven from northern Germany, who very kindly did the same recipe but with Perle instead of um, instead of my Eastern Golding substitute. And so I want to see how this how his beer tastes, and also it might be that his beer is much less um, affected by this peculiar bitterness that I had. Okay, let's compare this. Very similar color, mine's a bit more cloudy. Decent foam stability. He carbonated his a bit lower on my request because um, his is now really properly cask ale carbonation, three grams per liter CO2, mine's a bit too much. Um, I'll try just quickly mine, check for the bitterness. It's very faint, very slightly noticeable. So that is perfect. That's exactly what I hoped. And that means my beer is drinkable now, except if I start um, getting out the yeast slurry again. So I have to be careful with my bottles now, as I have to be with most other beers. So for example, he has the yeast sediment in the bottle, so obviously you have to be careful then as well. Let's smell. Yeah, very different. Mine is very hop forward. His is a bit more, a bit less fruity. I mean, East King Golding is very fruity hop, it's a bit more spicy. I'm detecting a kind of sulfurous note, so a bit of, bit of sulfur, like old eggs. This might get better with longer co um, conditioning. He told me that this would be very young now, and I actually should have let it in um, in the bottle for some time, but I was eager to get this video out because it's the next in the queue. Um, yeah, so my apologies, Stephen. Uh, Still very decent, very hoppy note, quite nicely balanced, not as intense as mine. Let's see what it tastes like. Hmm, okay. Yeah, this seems to be a much higher final gravity. My beers tend to just uh, attenuate much larger than, for example, breweries or other people do. Um, not sure why. Uh, it happens no matter whether I have fresh fermentation vessels or not, so I don't think it's a um, cross-contamination of my yeast strengths. But his is really just sweetish, balanced, um, definitely more malty, malt-forward. Mine, mine is very hop-forward, so I guess that would be the main difference. His looks a bit less reddish in the color as well. Um, I shouldn't get too hang hung up about the color. Looks very similar here, but uh, slightly Slightly different when you look at, at it from here. Okay, so yeah, just two different types of, of how this beer is made. Mine is all forward, the other more forward. I like the more forward one very much, and I think this is also a tad closer to what you would uh, get from cask in the UK. But I am uh, missing some of the smell that I'm used to as well. Doomba is very um, hop forward. So something he also sent me is a Doomba ca uh, can. So we can try what this one tastes like. Now, obviously, this is never tasting the same as cask. But it might just be a good thing to calibrate. So what people in the UK do with bottles and cans is they, they really overcarbonate stuff compared to cask. Cask is really made in a way that the flavor is the most important thing. And as soon as people buy bottles or cast, uh, cans, apparently the brewers think they, they need the, the, the certain oomph. So foam stability, of course, is awesome now. Lots of carbonation that creates new foam. Very subtle smell, mostly smell of caramel. Very slightly hoppy as well. Let's compare that to the others first. Yeah, some floral notes that are also in Stephen's version. Mine is the same in intensity, but somehow slightly different. I guess it's the Eastern Goldie instead of Perle. Mm. Mine is smelling like caramel as well. Uh, don't smell any caramel malt with Stevens because of this sulfurous note. Yeah, I would say this the, the smell of the malt, which is really something very unspecific. Not sure if I'm getting this, uh, if I'm accurately saying what I'm smelling, but that is very similar between mine and, and uh, the original.
big sip. Mm, nice. This one comes out of my 10 to 11 degree fridge. So really nicely um, conditioned. Very gently bit viscous on the mouth. Great mouthfeel. Very simple, easy drinking beer. Not too much um, aromas of anything, but just intense caramel and malt. Let's see if I can get this out of these. Yeah, the, this um, soft mouthfeel isn't the same, but the maltiness is still there. Yeah, flavor is very similar. I get some sharp edge, which I'm not sure. It's it's a bit like the carbonation would be more biting, but his is also very lowly carbonated, so that doesn't make any sense. Okay, mine is still definitely a bit more bitter than the other two. That is uh, not not correct. I probably should have done less hopping, or it is still some of this polyphenols or whatever residue. Mm. Mine doesn't have that sharp edge to it. Uh, mine is flatter, less intensely in the flavor of the malts. Um, just a cleaner, simpler finish because of probably lower final gravity. But the rest of the flavor is very similar. So um, just without any sharp edges, which is the same as the British one. Okay, that would be all of it. I think the video got long enough. And then I will see you again for the next video, which I'm not sure what it might be. I have several test beers coming up, so maybe one of those. But I hope I will see you again for the next video, and then until then, take care.